Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, in, in this section of everything you know about isolation levels is wrong, we're going to explore a couple especially pernicious, I think that's the right use of the word, situations where uh, <clears throat> read queries and write queries be can become entangled with each other in surprising ways. Now, <clears throat> uh, it is all too common in my experience as a SQL Server performance tuning consultant with reasonable rates to see this situation unfold and uh, for there to not often be very, uh, as, as they say in, in the programming world, elegant fixes uh, to the situation for various reasons that we will we'll talk about uh, as we go through the demos a bit. So uh, just to make sure that I get this right in my head. For the first demo, I'm going to be using Query Helper 1. For the second demo, I'm going to be using Query Helper 2. In the first demo, we're going to look at a read query, a select query, blocking a write query. And in the second demo, we're going to look at a read query deadlocking with uh, a write query. Now, if you think that this is weird and that this can only happen under like serializable or repeatable read, you're wrong. It can absolutely happen all the time under read committed the default pessimistic isolation level for SQL Server databases, except for Azure SQL DB, where read committed snapshot isolation is the default. For reasons we have, I think, explored thoroughly in other other portion, other segments of this of this video. So we are already in the right database and we have already got this procedure uh, created, but let's just be extra extra cautious here and make sure we have that. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, since I'm using the 2013 version of the Stack Overflow database, uh, I am asking for this query to find all of the, the dates for in the votes table where creation date is greater than or equal to this start date, which is the final day of, of time for Stack Overflow 2013. There, there, is no, there, is no, there are no dates after this. And uh, what this query does is an index seek into our non-clustered index, uh, and then a, uh, an inner join, a nested loops join, to implement the key lookup down here below. All well and good, isn't it? And uh, if we look at the properties of the nested loops join, we'll see this unordered prefetch uh, property of it, uh, that that thing exists and is there. And we'll see that this key lookup happened um, uh, 3,808 times of an estimated 12,788 times. So the, the SQL Server's estimate was a little off for this one, but that's okay. We still get the same compound effect. Now, uh, this, this, this demo is one part, is, is uses parameter sensitivity as a, uh, just an accessible vehicle to make it work. Uh, you could see this happen under other cases where, uh, where parameter sensitivity does, uh, does kick in. And you may also see it under some circumstances where SQL Server just has bad estimates for stuff and chooses this plan shape uh, rather than like a, a merge join or a hash join with an index scan. So what I'm going to do is uh, over in this window, I'm going to make sure that this query is fully highlighted. We're in the right database, so all we have to do is grab this part. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to run this query using the start date of 17530101. That is like the earliest date time you can do. Uh, that is when history switched over from the uh, Julian to Gregorian, or Gregorian to Julian, one of those things. Anyway, uh, you can blame Philip Stanhope for that, apparently. Uh, the, the Earl of something or other, um, he, he really led the, led, led the crusade on switching that calendar over. Uh, personally, uh, I, I, I like those calendars that have 13 months in them because they all have 30 days <laughs> in the month and every month starts on Monday and ends on Friday or something. It's great. It's just everything is so equally spaced. Think about all the headaches we would save with the 13-month calendar. Well, you're never going to get it unless Philip Stanhope is somehow... Uh, reborn in, in some other form and says, hey, this 12-month calendar is real annoying. <laughs> but, uh, man, com computers would have a hard time if they made that change, wouldn't they? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to run this store procedure. 
with this start date. And what this is going to make happen is uh, since we're, re we're reusing that key lookup plan, uh, but this time we're going to have a lot more lookups to do, this version is going to run a lot longer. And if I come over here and run this, and we look at blocking and who is active, we're going to see the lock time on this query tick up and up and up and up and up. I believe this query runs for about 11 seconds total, but I'm not going to push my luck and try to run SP at, recipe who is active too many more times. What I do want to focus in on is that we have a select query up here running, right? That's the one from our store procedure with the parameter sensitivity that's running for a long time. And then we have our update query down here. The update query is the one that's trying to take a lock that is unable to take a lock. If we scroll over to the side here, and we can skip the query plan, what I want to show you is the locks over here. What happened is uh, the, the query that took, uh, that, used, that used the key lookup, the select query, has taken an object level shared lock, gosh darn it, an object level shared lock that has been granted on the votes table, okay? That object level shared lock is preventing the update from running and doing anything. Uh, I'm just gonna come over here and cancel this because we don't actually need to change all that stuff. And thanks to uh, in magical, innovative, uh, accelerated database recovery technology, uh, that thing rolls back instantly, which is wonderful because that used to get out of control sometimes before. So. Uh, because in the query plan for the select, we have this query, right? And you can see how long this had been going for when this happened. We have this query over here, which is taking object level sh an object level shared lock on the votes table. And then of course we have the update query, which is trying to take a, uh, take a lock on the votes table. This query is unable to take a lock because this object, th this object level intent exclusive lock is incompatible with the object level shared lock that's been taken out by the select query. So that is the first example of how, uh, that is just one example of how read queries can block write queries. Usually when you see a read query, like if you look at the block process report or wherever you get your blocking from, if you see a read query that's blocking a write query, you can almost guarantee, very nearly guarantee, uh, as long as the data in the block process report is correct, uh, that there is a key lookup somewhere in the query plan for the read query, and that is what's caused the blocking to occur uh, against the modification query. Uh, so that's, that's an ex explanation of that and why that happens. Now, this is one of those things where um, that I, I talked about earlier, where sometimes lock escalation will happen for a read query, this is one of those things. So SQL Server does, uh, so the, the duration of the object level shared locks do, does increase to the point where SQL Server does escalate those locks to the duration of the transaction. So as soon as that select query finished, the update was free to make progress and like take the locks and do its thing. But until that object level shared lock does release that, it's not allowed to. The reason for that is because if you look at what, if you think logically about what a key lookup does, uh, you have an index seek here where you find some number of rows. I mean, this could be a scan too. Uh, you could have an index scan that finds some number of rows. And then for every row that you find here, you have to do, you go into the nested loops join, and then you locate that row in the, in the key lookup. In the key lookup, what you're doing is uh, essentially joining the non-clustered index to the clustered index on whatever the clustered index key column is, column or columns are for, for a table. Uh, if this were a heap, it would be a read lookup. That's different, but we're concentrating on key lookups here. So when in SQL Server, when you have a table that has a clustered index on it, those clustered index key column or columns are, uh, in, are inherited by the non-clustered index. So those columns live for a non-unique non-clustered index in the key of the non-clustered index at the very end of the key. If it's a unique non-clustered index, they live in the include portion of the index, the leaf level data pages. So uh, those columns are implicitly part of your non-clustered indexes. So that SQL Server can do things like this, check for corruption, validate things here and there. But there's a, there, there is a bit of a price to pay with that. And that price to pay is when you have a query that does a key lookup like this, and that key lookup goes on for a long time, 
SQL Server has to protect your query a bit, right? And it has to protect your query a bit by taking those locks and then escalating those locks uh, so that as you find rows in your non-clustered index, those rows aren't allowed to change in the clustered index. So SQL Server protects the clustered index from changes so that the rows that you go to find, do lookups for all of a sudden don't find either incorrect or missing or duplicate data in there because, again, read committed has all sorts of bad stuff happen. Uh, this, this doesn't happen under optimistic isolation levels like uh, read committed snapshot isolation and snapshot isolation, but under pessimistic isolation levels, uh, or I mean, technically this wouldn't happen with, maybe not happen with no lock hints, but we don't need to talk about that. Um, <laughs> it's sort of unfortunate. Uh, but uh, this also wouldn't happen if we weren't doing a lookup, right? So in some cases, you might be able to fix the lookup to address this. In other cases, if this is just happening a lot all over the place, and you know, uh, maybe even if you are allowed to change the indexes, the uh, the index definition that you would have to use in order to fully solve the lookup would just be astronomical. So there there are ways around this situation. But if you're finding this, if you're looking in your block process report and seeing a lot of read queries blocking a lot of write queries, you might not be able to go and change absolutely everything in order to fix every single one of those to avoid this situation. So. Rather depressing stuff all around there, right? Not, not a good time. Now let's look at a situation where, a very actually almost identical situation where a read query will deadlock with a write query. And again, this is something that only happens under pessimistic isolation levels. Now for this one, we're putting, we're putting actually, <laughs> smart move here. Uh, we are going to turn off actual execution plans uh, for this because we don't want to return an actual execution plan for every time we loop through and do this. SSMS would have a tough time, SSMS would probably crash, uh, and uh, I don't want to make Aaron Stilato sad on, on national YouTube television. So we're going to avoid that situation. But um, what we're going to do is over in Query Helper 2, we have this update query ready to go. Uh, we've already, let's just run this stuff to make sure it's taken care of. And uh, we're going to make sure that we have this highlighted and we're going to make sure that we have our select query highlighted here. And uh, we're going to come over here and run this and come here and run this. And then real quick, yeah, we nailed it. Cool, wonderful. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. We have caught a deadlock in action, All right? So we can actually kill this thing off because we don't need it anymore. This thing is just spinning away. If we come over and look at the, uh, the the query window for the select query, we can see that this collect this select query has been killed off by the deadlock monitor. All right? This query has chosen as the deadlock victim. Rerun the transaction. All right? Because what the deadlock monitor does is it wakes up every so often. Uh, maybe if it finds a deadlock, it, it looks at which one would be easier to roll back, which is always going to be a select query because you know they're not using any transaction log. There are no changes to replay and do anything with. Uh, so the select query gets killed off, right? Because it, 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 we were had a deadlock entanglement with our with our two modification queries, and over here this one won, of course, right? This one did its thing, and you know it was just continuing in this loop doing this update. So uh, what happened? Uh, if we come over and look, oh, sorry, that was query helper one. <laughs> this thing was doing its update and just running in this loop, uh, doing its thing here. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, if, if we come back to who is active, uh, what we'll see is that for this brief moment in time, we caught these two queries in perfect entanglement where uh, the, the update query was trying to take an intent exclusive lock and the select query was trying to take uh, a, a shared block, right? Saying th these two locks just could not make progress. And it's a little tough to explain without looking at the query plans. But if we look at those sort of next to each other, you have uh, exactly what I sort of explained before, where the key lookup is getting rows from here. And SQL Server is protecting the clustered index here where we're trying, we're trying to avoid, uh, we're, trying, we're taking object level shared locks to avoid rows that we get from the, the non-clustered index access 
uh, from changing when we go into the loop join and start getting those rows out uh, to do the key lookup. So we have, we're protecting those rows in the clustered index so those can't change. And in the modification query, we're not doing a key lookup here, we're just doing a clustered index uh, scan here, I believe. It would be helpful if SSMS showed us the full name. Oh, it's a clustered index seek. Look at that. See, we just had a clustered index uh, that could have been anything. But then uh, when we modify this, we have, to modif we have to modify not only the clustered index, but the non-clustered index. So these two queries get quite entangled between the locks taken here and the locks that are attempted to be taken here. So like trying to read from here gets blocked and trying to update here gets locked and then trying to read from here probably gets locked and trying to do stuff here creates blocking. And so because of the way these queries entangle with each other, they end up deadlocking, right? And that's exactly what we see in these results where uh, we have uh, for a brief time until the deadlock monitor woke up and killed one of them, we had these queries that were stuck with each other, right? If we look at the blocking session IDs and drag those over here, we see perfect entanglement between these two. So neither one was able to make progress until SQL Server woke up and knocked one out, which of course is gonna be the select query because the select query doesn't use any transaction logs, so it's trivially easy to just say you're canceled, right? Get out, scram. So these are just a couple more of the rather annoying things that can happen under read committed, the default isolation level. Again, uh, th these would not happen under an optimistic isolation level. Uh, they would, um, of, you know, uh, they would ha be more likely to happen under a pessimistic isolation level, like repeatable read or serializable. Uh, and then, you know, some fixes that you might have in there. Uh, create a covering index if you can, maybe. Uh, use an optimistic isolation level so you don't have to fix every single lookup in all of these queries or the end of till the end of time. Uh, you know, that would be one way to do it. Uh, if you're able to rewrite the query, you could rewrite it as like a self-join, which wouldn't exactly be a, a lookup. You could add in like a merge or hash join hint to that query so that you wouldn't have the nested loops uh, pre stuff going on. There are, there are like different ways to fix it, but honestly, if you're seeing just like lots and lots of read queries blocking lots and lots of write queries or lots and lots of read queries deadlocking with lots and lots of write queries um, avoiding that situation like if you see select queries at the lead of blocking chains not just being blocked but uh, select queries at the lead of blocking chains uh, you might be you might just want to start using an optimistic isolation level where you would avoid that scenario entirely because it's very very unlikely that whatever that select query is doing is so important that all of your, mod like a vast swaths of your modification queries end up getting blocked by that select query, which is um, not a situation that I think anyone wants to be in. Anyway, <clears throat> thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And uh, we're going to carry on uh, this, 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 this material in the next video where we're going to talk about, uh, I just had to sneak a peek there. We're gonna talk about uh, query patterns that are sensitive, highly sensitive to concurrency and specifically um, how, they, like, how they are sensitive under either read committed the default pessimistic isolation level or read committed snapshot isolation. There are no demos in this, it's just me walking through the code and talking about different points where data could change and how that could affect the next steps that a query takes. So uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll have a lot of fun with that. And um, I don't know. We'll, we'll go from there and see, see what happens, I guess. Anyway, cool. Uh, that's, that's good for me here. Uh, thank you. I love you.